Well, I'm in an exciting series called The Return of Jesus. Amen. And I love this because uh, the Bible gives us glimpses of, of the future that God has for mankind. And I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but one third of your Bible is prophecy. Amen. And prophecy is written in or written or oral communication from God that contains real life events and it reveals future events of what's to come. And so right now, really, you can look around and you can see that we are in we're not just in the last days. We're in the last of the last days. We are in, this is, the. I'm going to say this, as Christians, we are in the greatest time of Christianity we can ever be in. Amen. Why do I say that? Because I believe in our lifetime, we're going to see Jesus split the eastern sky. I believe it's going to be in our lifetime. Amen? And, uh, and so we, we, can, we know this because the Bible actually reveals what's going on uh, uh, in this world today, in Ezekiel 38, it reveals that, that Russia and some of this, these Middle Eastern countries are connecting with each other. And they're all connecting, and you can see it's playing out even now, that they're connecting to come against Israel. The devil hates Israel. The devil is trying to do everything he can to wipe out Israel. Why? Because, because the devil knows that Israel has a part to play in, in the uh, end of this, of this uh, world system. Amen? And so, so we have to get a revelation that the Bible is a prophetic book. I love that. It's not just a, a, a book of, of what has happened. Amen? It's not just a history book. It's a prophetic book. And I love this because even Jesus, there were 300, approximately 300 prophecies that, walked, that talked about Jesus coming and talked about Jesus' life. And Jesus fulfilled all these prop prophecies with accuracy. So if God could reveal Jesus and what he was going to do, you certainly can bet your bottom dollar he can tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't have to go to some psychic to tell you what, God, what, 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 what your future holds. No, you can, you can get the Bible. The Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. I like what the Bible says. I know the plans that I have for you. Lord. See, you can, you, can, you can stand on that. Good plans, not for destruction, amen, not to go through a tribulation, but for good to give you a hope. And a future, glory to God. So Jesus is coming back. So I'm ministering you this because I believe that if you understand what God is going to do and you understand what, where we're going to end up, it's going to increase your faith and give you great hope. Amen. Because I'm, I'm going to say this to you today. It's not just faith. We live by faith, yes, but within faith you have to have hope. And hope is an earnest expectation of good to come. Amen. Somebody say, I'm a believing believer. believer. Amen. Let's look at Titus here because here in Titus 2, 11 and 13, I love this. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I love that. In other words, God doesn't want anybody to perish but all come to the saving grace of His Son, Jesus. In other words, the grace is here for people to get saved. The grace is on this planet for your family to get saved. The grace is here for you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So it says, it says here, For the grace of God brings salvation, has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age. Pastor, I thought I'm saved by grace and not by works. Are you telling me I have to do something in faith? Yes, you got to live godly. <laughs> you got to live righteously. You got to live soberly. See, see, your, your faith is connected to the word 
And when your faith is connected to the Word, the Word is not just scriptures that you memorize. Yes, you can memorize scriptures, but the Word, the word is uh, what you obey. You, if you're not obedient to the Word, then you don't really believe the Word. Somebody say, I'm obedient to the Word. And so it says here to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Look for the, now, now, now underline this, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, 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 so here, uh, Paul uh, is, is saying here that, that we need to live godly. We need to be making sure we're checking our, 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 our P's and our Q's, making sure we're walking with God. And then he says this is, should be really our, our faith stance in our Christian walk. It's in 2.13. Let me read it one more time. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is called the blessed hope. In other words, our Christian walk should be consistently for us looking for Jesus to return. And if we're consistently getting up in the morning and saying, Jesus, are you coming back tonight? <laughs> Amen. Are you coming back tonight? It will get us walking right with God. Look at your name and say, "Look, walk right with God. So the early church used to greet one another, and the early church really believed in the rapture, and they, and they would greet each other, Maranatha. Now, Maranatha is the word that means, Lord, come quickly. And it was something that they would say quite often when they met each other, Maranatha. What were they doing? They were reminding each other that Jesus is coming back, and that he's coming back sooner than we think. And so we got to get a revelation of that. Jesus, Jesus taught his disciples that he's coming back. We hit it on, on it last week uh, in John 14, 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So don't let your heart be troubled because of all these things that are happening in the world. And then dropping down in, in the third verse, it says, I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So this is what I believe is a rapture scripture that Jesus wants to be with us. Jesus has a desire and he longs to have his family with us. Amen. We are a family. You know, the, the, we are a body we are an army, but we're also the bride of Christ. Amen. Say, I'm the bride of Christ. Amen. And I like what the Apostle Paul says here in 1 Corinthians. It's, it, he's talking about the rapture of the church. And the rapture is going to be the, the next greatest event before the seven-year tribulation. And that's uh, before the judgment comes on this earth. Because I'm going to say this to you this morning. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming on this planet. In other words, the, God is a good God, and to be good, you have to be just. And to be just, you have to judge. And so judgment is coming to this planet, but thank God that our sins were judged on the cross. Thank God we have the grace of God in our lives. And so in, in 1 Corinthians 15, this is really powerful, Listen to this, this is powerful. It says here in 15, 51 through 54, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That word sleep actually means die. Amen. But we shall all be changed. So he's, he's saying to us that, you know, like I, I'm saying to you today that, that Jesus is coming back before you go to the grave. I'm preaching to somebody today. In other words, Jesus is coming back, and I believe in this lifetime. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. That gets me excited. Yeah. You got to get excited about the return of Jesus. Amen. And, and it should cause us, because the return of Jesus, w w yes, we'll be caught up, but it should get us to ring the bell that judgment's coming. In other words, we should be letting people know 
it's getting close. Jesus is coming. Get ready for Jesus. It says here, it says here, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible has put on incorruptible, and the mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Amen. And so, so this is saying right here that we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. That's how quick it's going to be. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have perfect, glorified bodies, glory to God. And I'm telling you, you're going to be so amazed when you get your glorified body. No more dieting. No more working out. No more of this running, glory to God. No more watching calories. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm excited about that because I'm telling you, uh, when I get my glorified body, you're going to be looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger Jr. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. So God is amazing. Amen. And whatever you believe, just get a, a magazine, you know, with uh, the Photoshop pictures of these ladies, ladies, and say, that's what I'm going to look like. Glory to God. So, but God is so good. Amen. In other words, we're all going to have perfect weight, perfect age, perfection in, in 100%. Do you believe that today? Amen. Amen. So, so we know this because Jesus was raised from the dead. He's the first born of the dead. And, uh, and we're going to be raised to life as well. And we'll have incorruptible bodies. Amen. Jesus is coming back. His appearing is imminent. And we're going to be caught up in the air to rule and reign with him forever. Last week, I believe I gave some convincing scriptural evidence that Jesus is coming back before he judges the world in the seven year tribulation. I like what it says in Luke 21, 36. I didn't give you this, but I'm going to give you three scriptures that backs up what I said last week that Jesus is coming back because some people believe that, that the church is going to go through the tribulation. Some people believe that and if they want to go through the tribulation, more power to them. But I'm going to believe that Jesus is going to raise me up before that happens, glory to God. But, and you will know this because in Luke 21, 36, it says, watch, therefore, this is Jesus, and he's talking about the end times in, in, in Luke chapter 21. And in verse 36, he says, watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Notice that he says here, that if you're going to stand before the Son of Man, because the Bible says some will shrink back, talking about Christians, some will shrink back at Jesus' appearing. Why would anybody shrink back at Jesus' appearing? Because they might be more in love with the world than they are with the Word. And we got to be very careful because the world will try to draw us into the glitz and the glamour of this world system and, and all the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, the boastful pride of life will disappear, glory to God, will go by the wayside, but God's word will never go by the wayside. Amen. And if you are keeping God's word, you will never go by the wayside. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, uh, uh, so we hear, we have Jesus as a witness saying here to, to pray that you may be worthy to escape the things that are coming to pass on this earth. To be worthy, Pastor? I thought being raptured is a gift. It's a gift, but it, 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 it yes, it's a gift, but it's actually a reward for your faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will talk to, to you about that as we move forward in the message. In 1 Thessalonians 5.9, it says, For God did not appoint us 
to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Another rapture scripture. And then Peter, uh, in 2 Peter 2, Peter is talking about, in the chapter, he's talking about Lot. He's talking about God reigning his judgment on Sodom and, and, and Gomorrah. And, uh, and so he's, he's talking about, how, about that. And, and Peter's talking about living right because judgment came on these cities and it's, it's going to come on this world. And then Peter says this in, in 2 Peter 2 verse 9. He says, Then the Lord knows how to rescue the devout from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment. So we see here that, that Peter's connecting this, that God is on a rescue mission. Hey man, I'm preaching today. He's on a rescue mission to rescue us from the coming judgment of this world. Amen. The seven year tribulation is when the Antichrist will be revealed and he will try to rule the world. And, 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 and in the process of that, God's wrath will be being poured out on mankind. The seven year tribulation happens right after, again, the rapture. Today, I want to reveal more on how you can prepare for Jesus' uh, return. Uh, last week, I gave you a question. Will all Christians be raptured when Jesus returns? you remember that? <laughs> Amen. Will all Christians? Well, some say yes. If you're a Christian, you're going to be raptured. Some say no, and some say I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I like the idea. Well, you know, you're just saved, but, but is Jesus, uh, he's, he's your Savior, but is he your Lord? Are you following Jesus? Is he, is he just your Savior, or is he, has, has you made him your Lord? If he's your Lord, then your life revolves around him. If he's your Savior, then he revolves around you. Can I get a witness in the house today? So I want, I'm not just making Jesus my Savior and I can live my life any way I want and then go to heaven. Uh, no, I want to make Jesus my Lord. Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I ask you to do? And many in that day will say, Lord, haven't we done this in your name? And haven't we done that in your name? And haven't we done this? That sounds like Christian people. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Now the key in this is not that I never knew you, it's the fact that you practicing lawlessness. And Christians don't practice lawlessness, we practice righteousness. Amen. 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 We're, we practice in being good, not being bad. Amen. We want to look more like Jesus, not like the other guy. Amen. And so, and so I, I believe this, and there is a parable uh, in the Bible that I really believe uh, uh, reveals uh, that, that, that there's going to be people that, that will make it in the rapture, and some people may be stuck down here. Anybody ever seen those Left Behind series, read the books, watched the movies, and some of these people got left behind? But they, but they then they repented while they were left behind and tried to get other people saved. So there's going to be some good things if people do get left behind, if they start walking right with God. But why walk right with God in the tribulation when you can walk right with God now? Why, why wait until all hell's breaking loose? Now I'm going to serve God. Why not start serving God now? Why not give God everything you have now? Why do you need to wait until some catastrophe hits your life and then you say, well, maybe I should start serving God? Because a lot of times people only serve Christ in a crisis. And then when that crisis is over, they go back to their losing life. I'm preaching today. But we don't want to go back to a losing, backslidden, uh, half-committed life in God. No, we want to be full-throttled, committed Christians in the walk with, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in Matthew 25, it says the kingdom of heaven. See, I'm going to say this. I can, I can preach up here boldly because I used to be half lukewarm backslidden. And that's the worst place to be. 
You're never happy there. You're, you're, uh, it's always stress in that place. There's, ne there's very little peace of God. You don't have any joy and you're angry all the time. The worst person on planet earth is not the sinner. I I'm talking about their attitude. Most sinners are pretty happy in their sin. Can I get a witness in the house today? But the worst person on planet earth is the backslidden Christian. Amen. Why? Because they have already tasted of the goodness of God and now they're back in the world trying to get their cup full and they will never get no satisfaction. But they try and they try and they try, but they won't get no satisfaction until you're walking with God. Amen? Hallelujah. It says here in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Though, then, then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be, should be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, notice it says those who were ready, underline that, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding because we are the bride of Christ. And, and it says here, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So he's telling us to watch and pray because we don't know exactly when Jesus is coming back. Even Jesus himself doesn't know when he's coming back. Only that is revealed by the Father. Only the Father knows. So Jesus doesn't even know. Because if he did, he would tell us. The Holy Spirit revealed to us, I'm coming back Friday, get ready. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm coming back. I'm telling you, if you knew Jesus was coming back tonight, would you live your life differently today? Would you probably crack open the Bible? You would probably get on your knees and start praying. You'd probably say, God, is there anything in my life that, 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 that's not working with you and help me, you know, show it to me so I can get rid of it. You might, you might live a little differently. So if we, listen, if you are, if you might live a little differently, knowing that Jesus will come back, start living differently now. Amen. Amen. So, so, so the, the key is here uh, that, that, that Jesus is coming back. And the key is that you must have your oil filled. And the five virgins did not have their oil filled. That means they weren't walking a sold out Christian walk with the Lord. Now, before I go into this, because I'm going to talk to you about seven churches, and we're going to get some keys on, on what we need to do to keep our oil filled. Amen? And let me just give you a, a small capsule of what's going down uh, and what's going to go play out in the future uh, of the church age. Uh, right now, we are in the church age until Jesus returns. Uh, number two, the church will be taken up in the rapture. That's the next event. The next uh, event will be the seven-year tribulation when the Antichrist will try to take over and God's wrath will be poured out. So we got, we, we're in the church age, uh, then the rapture's coming, and then the seven-year tribulation is going to be on this earth. What will the church be doing when the seven-year tribulation is happening down here on this earth? What will the church be doing? We'll, we'll be eating, we'll be at a banquet table in heaven eating with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And hopefully I'll be close to Jesus at that table. Amen. So close that I could pass the salt. Hallelujah. 
And that should be our prayer. Lord, I want to be close to you at the banquet table at the seven year, a seven year feast. Glory to God. Well, you say, well, seven years, that's a long time. Well, in heaven, you, you know, in heaven, time is different than the time down here. Because in heaven, it says here, a thousand years is one day in heaven. So, so seven years might be, a, might be an, uh, you know, I haven't figured it out. But might be a, might be a thirty minute, forty minute, fifty minute meal. Glory to God. And then what what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to read to you what's going to happen. But we're coming back to take over this earth. Glory to God. Amen. And so the seven year tribulation. Then the second coming of Christ. Some uh, some of you may have heard Armageddon. Amen. Maybe uh, was there a movie called Armageddon? Amen. And uh, and so and so that's uh, so Jesus is coming back to get rid of the Antichrist. Uh, and, 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 and to get rid of the devil, glory to God. And uh, let's look at this in Revelation. It says here in 19, 11, 11 through 16, it says, Now I saw in heaven, and open up, and this is Jesus coming back, Behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen. Who's the armies in heaven? That's us coming back. White and clean follow him on white horses. You're going to get a horse, glory to God. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp two a uh, sharp sword that with he, it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of wrath of the almighty God. And he on his robe and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Written on his thigh. I remember somebody came to me one day and they were a, a young person in the church and they said they read this scripture and they said, Pastor, it says here that Jesus on his thighs written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Does, does that mean I can get a tattoo? Because they, they, they looked at that as being a tattoo, you know. Well, as long as, as long as you have a tattoo of a scripture on your leg, I think it'd be okay. No, I didn't say that. But uh, I said, well, the Bible says in the Old Testament not to mark your body, you know. But I'm not against tattoos, you know, if you want to do it, but I think you shouldn't do it for pride's sake, because a lot of people get tattoos because they want to show how, how, how cool and big and bad they are, amen, or how, you know, how exciting they are, they're a, a person of the world, but, 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 but we shouldn't be, you know, the Bible says don't mark your body, that's a side issue, but, but I'm not going to judge you on that, if you got one, then praise the Lord anyway, amen, you can have it removed if you like, amen, and so we see here that Jesus is coming back on a white horse, he's bringing an army of people with them, that's us. We'll have white horses and we'll come to take over the planet. Number five, the, the, uh, uh, in, in this process, the devil will be chained. By, God will use one of his mighty angels to chain the devil and he will be put into a bottomless pit. Can somebody say amen on that? And in the process, it's called the thousand year millennial reign. And we'll be reigning with Jesus down here on earth for a thousand years, and there will be people down here, but we will be, we will have the glorified bodies, but people will have natural bodies down here. And in a thousand years, you have people living with no devil on this planet. So what's going to happen is that none of these people will ever be tempted to do wrong. And it will be like, almost, it'll be like heaven on earth. And you will have glorified bodies, but there will be people marrying, giving in marriage, having kids, and it will be for a thousand years. But it's interesting to me, the Bible says after that thousand years, God's going to allow Satan to be released out of that bottomless pit. And you say to yourself, why? Because, because God loves each one of us, and God wants each, of us, each one of us to follow him. And he loves us and gave his son Jesus. But because he loves us, love always has to be tested. Because if you don't test love, how do you know somebody really loves you? If you're not being tested in a love relationship, some of you are in a marriage relationship and been tested in your relationship. And the test is, are you going to stay? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because sometimes marriages aren't easy. Sometimes you struggle, but the tests are, are you going to pray for your spouse? Are you going to try to be your best? Are you going to live with them? Glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? The test for us, God, there's always a test in our love walk with God. Remember the test with Adam and Eve? It was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was a test. Are you going to, are you going to, um, uh, be with me and have revelation knowledge and walk with me or are you going to move over to the tree of knowledge of good and evil or are you going to exalt knowledge over relationship yeah. are you listening to what I'm saying to you today so love has to be tested and so and so what the people uh, when the devil comes in uh, the, the, the some of these people unfortunately will turn to the devil can you believe that it, after the thousand year reign the devil will be come back. He's going he's gonna to tempt people. And some people on this planet will turn back to Satan or turn to Satan. And then you know what? You know, that's just how it is. Amen. But, but I'm not turning to Satan. And you're not turning to Satan. And of course, we're already glorified. So there's no way possible that we can turn to Satan. But it's the people that grew up without the devil being on this planet. Did, am I getting this? You understand what I'm saying? Once the devil comes, he's going to try. He's going to deceive the nations again, and they're going to try to come against God. But God's going to overcome them. Amen. And then uh, God judges His creation in the white throne judgment. The white throne judgment. And this, it says it here in Revelation 20, because the white throne judgment is when he, uh, he, he judges all mankind now. He judges all mankind. And the reason why it's called the, white, the great white throne judgment is because um, when John saw it in a vision that God gave him, he said there was a white throne. So the, the, the people said it must be the white throne judgment. Amen. That's how they figured it out. Amen. So in Revelation 20, 11 and 12, it says, Then I saw a great white throne on him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open, and another book were open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, but the things which were written in the books. So we see here... That, that, that there's going to be a, a judgment where God and, God and Jesus is not looking, Jesus will be judging mankind and he's not looking forward to that day because a part of his creation that rejected Jesus will end up in an eternal pit of fire forever. And I don't want that to be my future. But those that receive Christ, so it says books were open. This is all the things that the unsaved people have done and they will be judged for their sins. But if you, are, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your sins were judged on the cross, glory to God. And so that one book is the book of the Lamb's book of life that your name is written in it. And so that book right there means that you're going to go into everlasting glory and, and the, the loss will go into everlasting shame. And, you know, it's hard, it's hard to even fathom that, but that's the way it is. It's truth. And so I got to get you the truth. And that's why we got to have an, an urgency. Look at your neighbor and say, get an urgency. We got to get an urgency for the lost. Because if they don't get Jesus in their life, they're going to end up in a devil's hell. And, the, and hell was never created for people. God never created hell for people. He created it, hell, for the devil and his demons. But people will go there. Why? Because, because they reject Jesus Christ. See, the chief sin of all sins is not fornication or adultery or lying or any of that. Those are sins, yes, but, but the chief sin of all sins is not receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not believing on, on the Son that, that God sent for the sacrifice of our sins. And when we reject Christ, we reject heaven. And I'm, I'm, listen, you need to accept Christ, glory to God. So, so this message should really encourage us because we, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and we're not going to allow our names to be blotted out of the book. Glory to God. Amen. And so 
I love this. So, so, so Jesus spoke to John, and John was uh, on the island of Patmos, and he was banned to a rock quarry island uh, in his last days. And they banned him. They tried to boil the, the apostle John in oil, but they couldn't kill him, so they put him on an island. And so, so he did one of his best works. He got the revelation, uh, and he wrote the book of Revelation uh, by Jesus coming to him and revealing truth. So there's seven churches, and these churches represent people in the body of Christ. And another, the first church he talks about, and these churches were commended and reprimanded. And so, so, so I, I, listen, if God commends me, I'm excited about being commended. In other words, you're doing a good job. But, but if there's areas in my life I need to correct, I want God letting me know. I don't want to keep going out in deception and doing wrong things to get judged over. No, I want, my, I want anything that I'm doing wrong to be exposed by the light. Can I get a witness in the house today? And so church, the church of Ephesus was one of the first churches that the Lord revealed to John that needed to get some things corrected. It says in Revelation 2, 4, and 5, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do this first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove the lampstand from its place unless you repent. So this, he's saying here that this church was doing some good things. They could judge apostles, college, and, and they had, were doing some good things, but they lost their first love. In other words, uh, they, were, they were coming to church they may be reading their Bible. They were doing their duty. Amen. They were doing do, their duty. Well, I'm doing my duty. I'm showing up. But, but their heart wasn't in it. See, can you come to church and your heart not be in it? Can you just be going to the, uh, through the motions? Have you ever been going through the motions? Well, I just show up. I, at least I show up. Hey, it's good showing up and you win. You, you, you beat 90% of the people show up. But, but you want to just not show up and just pay your dues. You, don't want, you just don't want to do it out of obligation. You want to show up out of love. Amen. No, because you love God. You love Jesus. You, want, you got to have more of God in your life. You're not coming in. You're not just paying your dues, glory to God. It's not just, you're not just showing up just to show up. No, you're showing up because he's showing up. And so when your love is fervent for God and for the people of, of, of the church, I'm telling you, you will, you'll be very close to being raised up with Jesus. Number two, the church of Smyrna uh, remained faithful. It says here in, Revelations, in Revelation 2.10, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. You see, a lot of people, well, let me say it this way. Some people that's in the Christian walk, if they encounter some trials in their life, some tribulations, some problems, they can get offended. And some people that encounter trials or fall in Christ, some can turn away from God. Or turn away from serving him. Or, and, and here, it's saying here, he's saying just because the devil's doing some things against you. Just because you're suffering in, in some areas in your life. In other words, don't give up. Stay faithful. The Bible says a faithful man will abound in blessings. Number three, the church of Pergamum. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it says here, but I have a few things against you because you... Because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. So here, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, we need to reject doctrine extremes because, because here, uh, this here is an extreme that some people believe Sometimes you hear a hyper grace message and the hyper grace message is, you know, God's grace is good for everything you do in this life. You don't worry. You don't need to worry about repenting. You can live any way you want and God's, God's grace covers it. But God's grace does not cover you living any way you want. Amen. I mean, in other words, living your life for yourself, living 
uh, for the world. No, no. The grace of God empowers us to live for Jesus. And so we got to get we got to get that empowerment for Jesus. Number number four, the church of Theratira, uh, Theratira uh, is is this. It says here, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, now this is a little different because here uh, th these people are living in it and think God's OK with it. The other people are, are pulling the grace card and they're repenting, but they're still living in it. Th these people are living in it and think God is okay with it. You can't live in fornication and think God's okay with it. You can't live a lifestyle that, that's uh, a lifestyle that's, you know, it's, it's Adam and Eve, glory to God. It's a man and a woman. You can't live alternative lifestyles and say, well, I got Jesus in my life. I can live an alternative lifestyle and God is, is okay because I'm married. I'm not in fornication anymore. But you know what? That's not a marriage in God's eyes. A marriage in God's eyes is between a man and a woman, glory to God. You say, you're old-fashioned. No, the Bible is old-fashioned. But the Bible is true, and I'm going to go with the Bible, and I'm not going to go with man's laws, what the government says. I'm going to go with what God says. Uh, uh, the church of Sardis, uh, it says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. So here, it, 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 that, that they, were, they weren't walking out their purpose in God. They were just, just, just uh, not doing what God was calling them to do. They weren't doing their purpose. One of the purposes of the church, one of the things that the church should be doing, uh, that the people in the body of Christ, let me put it that way, they should be going to church. Amen. We should not be exempting, you know, the Bible says... Draw, you know, come together. The Bible talks about in Hebrews that we need to come together in a body, amen, not forsaken the assembly of ourselves with other believers. And as the day draws near, it says as the day, what does that mean, Pastor? As the day, as the day draws near, the day that Jesus is coming back. So, so, so this walk in Christ is loving God, loving Jesus, and loving the body. And I'm going to say this, if you're not coming to church trying to be a blessing to, to your brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, uh, you're not loving the body. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. And so if you're loving the body, you're loving Jesus. You know, you say, how do you love Jesus? Love the body. Amen. What you've done to the least of these, brethren, you've done unto me. So what you've done to the least, Jesus said, you've done unto me. Amen. I love this because the church of Philadelphia this is the, the this is the amazing church that that Jesus did not rebuke, and I, you know I pray this prayer over you guys all time that Exceed Life Church would be likened like the church, the Philadelphia church in the Book of Revelation. I say, Lord, allow Exceed Life Church to be the Philadelphia church, and I love that because because I believe that I'm raising up a Philadelphia church in in the city of Virginia Beach. Glory to God. Amen. It says here in Revelation 3, 8, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Amen. So, so, so the church of Philadelphia, their key was they revered the word of God. They, they kept the word of God. In other words, as believers, we need to be in the word every day of our lives. Pastor, you're going a little too far now. No, you need to be in the Word every day. You need to get a Bible app. You need to get version or some Bible app that you like and make sure you're reading the Word every day. That's the reason why I have a network where I send a scripture out every day for you to read. How many people are on my network in here? If you're not on my network, you need to get on my network. Because you'll get a scripture that will embolden you, that will strengthen you, that will help you move forward in your walk with God. If you're not on the network, get on my network. Glory to God. And I got people that I'm getting on my network. God's been allowing me to use it as an evangelistic tool. And I'm meeting people that aren't real churchgoers, but I tell them how great the Word of God is. And they say, put me on the list. So I put them on Schindler's list. I put them on the list of life, glory to God. 
Amen. And so it's the word of God that will keep us. It's the word of God that will keep us from, from moving. You know, thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. If you hide God's word. See, see, the Bible will keep you from sin. But if you say uh, if the Bible will keep you from sin. But sin, if you keep sin in your life, it will keep you from the Bible. Mm. I, I know people right now. I've had, I have people that I know. Some of my, my nieces, uh, a, 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 a niece that I'm, I'm, I'm praying for. And I asked, do you want to get on my network? No, I'm too busy for it. I'm telling you, you should never be too busy for the word of God. A scripture that comes on a text, just a little scripture. You're too busy for that? You can't be too busy for God. Don't put God off because God might put you off. Mm. Amen. Don't put God off because God may end up putting you off. I'm preaching to somebody today. It says here, it says here in Revelation 3.10. Now, I want to focus. I'm closing down. Because you have kept my commandment to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one take your crown. So, so here, he's saying here, the church, the Philadelphia church, that was a church that's going to be the rapture church in the last days. And I'm saying to you this morning that you are getting rapture ready. You're getting yourself ready for the return of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The seventh church is a, it's the church of Laodicea. Leo de Cese, he says they needed to repent of lukewarmness. And basically, he says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold nor, or hot so that because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? See, in other words, God wants us to be, you know, uh, it says you, you, when, you, when you read this, cold or hot. Well, he's not saying cold in the sense of being cold to the things of God, like we use the word, they're cold to God. Cold is refreshing. It's like a refreshing drink. You need a cold, you, you, in other words, we need to be to God like a cool, refreshing drink on a hot day. Hot is refreshing. We, we need a hot drink on a cold day. So, so it, it, it means that we need to be refreshing to God. Our life should live, our life, the way we live it, should be refreshing to God. And it should not be a, a, a lukewarm, backslidden life. Can I get a witness in the house today? And I'm closing today because in Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on the throne, on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down at my father's throne. Glory to God. So, so, so Jesus is knocking on your hearts. Right now, you might be running hard after God. But there is a group of Christians that aren't God like they need to. You know, you have the ones on fire you have the ones that are half backslidden. And you, if you're in that backslidden group, you need to get back on fire for God. How do you do that? I remember I was backslidden. I was out of church many years ago. And I remember I started thinking about God. And I said, man, I need to get back with God. And the first thing I started doing was I had some worship albums that I, that I used to listen to. And I started playing some worship albums. Uh, some albums of, that, that, that connected to me to my salvation. And, and I'm telling you, worship is the key to get close to God. Yeah. And I want to encourage you, get some worship going, amen? Uh, I know that the ladies' meetings used to sing songs in the meeting. I don't know if they still do that. And one of the songs they used to sing is, I keep falling in love with him, falling in love with him over and over again. I keep falling in love with him, falling in love with him over and over again. I don't know the rest of the song, but I'm trying to sing it. <laughs> The days keep getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a something. My, my bow's high. I keep falling in love with him. Falling in love. See, listen, we need to keep falling in love with him. 
I wish I should have got that song, amen, and sang it to you. You would have loved it, amen. But, uh, but uh, we need to keep falling in. Don't fall out of love with Him. Fall in love with Him. Get close to God. And as you get closer to God, you will be rapture ready. You'll be caught up. You won't shrink back at His returning. No, you'll be saying, yes, I'm here. And you'll fly away, glory to God, into His arms. Did you receive it this morning? Yeah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you for your mercies and your goodness this morning. I thank you that you're getting us ready for your return. You are knocking on the hearts of people all over the place. Those listening, those watching, you are knocking on their hearts right now. Maybe they're in a place that they're not really serving you like they need to. Or maybe they've never made Jesus the Lord of their life. Well, today... The Bible says it's the day of salvation. You don't want to put God off. You don't want to procrastinate. You want to make that decision as God is moving on your heart. So I want you to pray this prayer and mean in your heart if you're ready to move forward in God. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification today. I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me, Lord. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen.